I didn't start the recording again. Perfect. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start now. So we missed a couple slides, but start over. if you want to print out something like I'm gonna say this. That would give me the full thing. But basically, modulus returns remainders. So if you use something like say you've got a for loop and it's going through the thing, okay? You know, one, two, three, all the way through. If you did mod three, when whatever mod three, that means the number is divisible by three. Mod five would be divisible by five. Mod seven is, you know, mod 13 means divisible by 13. So if you did mod 13, you could just say print and it'll print out a blank line. Trust me, you'll be able to figure that out. It's pretty simple to do. Okay. So with lists, you use the square brackets to identify the index number. Now, in this example, they're using four. You can hard code a number in there. You can use variables in there, which you will be doing. So you can do it anyway. And here it says, when the square brackets are followed by an equal sign, but that really, it's weird. I don't know why they're doing it this way. They're just, but it creates a list. They just, I don't like the way they refer to some of this stuff in here. Okay, in this example here, it's looping through it. So it says for i in range 10, print out i. So it's going to print out, okay, what is i going to contain in that first example? This part right up here, what's i going to contain? The number of values. It's going to be numbers, actually zero. zero yeah, zero through nine, because it's going to count. It's going to be four i in range ten. It's going to go zero through nine. Okay. Then the next line is going to say print i. So it's going to be printing out the zero, then the one. So it's going to print out zero, then a space, and then values, which is a list, whatever's in the list at this point. I don't know. So it's going to print out zero, space, something, one space, you know, whatever is in there. So you're going to be going through the list and you're pretty much going to do that for the dice program. It's already written for you, yeah, but you can use that. Yeah, for the homework and lock on. But now? Probably use that for homework. Yes, yeah, so it's already there. That's one part that that little table part in there they already did for you. As long as you don't mess up calling it, you'll be fine. Okay. Now here's a better version. Let's look at the difference between the first version and the second. So the first version, we hard-coded it at 10. See that? So zero through nine. The second one says for i in range length of values. So now we can have a list called values that's of any length. It's much better to do things like that than hard-coding it with a 10. Because on yours, it's going to have a random number of sides and a random number of rounds. So you couldn't hard-code it. Hard code, it wouldn't work. Okay. Then in the last example, four element in values. It literally just goes through each one. You, know, you can do either one. They all work, but the second and third are probably the best. I normally use the second one more than I use the third one, but they'll both. Okay. Okay, how can we reference things? Okay, in this example, scores really points to the first element in the list. Okay, wait, why are they calling it scores now? Values. Uh, I don't know why they're, why? So they're calling it values. I guess it's just holding scores, okay. A list very contains a reference to the list contents. I just said that, the reference is the location in memory. Okay, I don't know why they called this something else. There. Oh, you can also have what's called an alias, which we're going to see here in a second. Really, the name just points to something. And here's our example. So, in this example, they have a list called scores. It contains 10, 9, 7, 4, and 5. Okay? Scores points to a location in memory where these are stored. Then if we say values equals scores, okay, what it really does, it's making an alias to it. Now, both values and scores point to the same location in memory. You can use either one of them interchangeable at this point. They both point to the same list. They are not a new list. It's literally the same list. Okay? 
It's like you could call me Cain or you could call me Kenneth. One's a shorter version of the same name. They point to the same person, okay? Same way in this list. After doing that values equal scores, it says create a new list. Well, don't want to create a new list, but create an alias for scores now called values. So I don't do that a lot, yes. What would be the point of doing that in coding? Other than just using two different variables. That's the only real reason. That's the only real reason. Um, another thing you can think of if you've ever done anything with operating systems. It's like you might not want to, like, say you have a file, okay? Maybe you don't want to copy the file, but you want to be able to access it from multiple locations. So you can make shortcuts that point to this file. Like you can put a shortcut on your desktop, a shortcut, actually, all the stuff on our start menu, you know, when you hit the Windows key here. You go down here to all programs, those are all shortcuts. They're not the file. I mean, you could go find, um, in this case, Google Chrome somewhere on your operating system and access it. Or in this case, you could access this shortcut which points to it. That's all it is. It's just an alias or a shortcut to it. Yeah, it's, I very seldom ever do that, but you could. Okay. All right. Modify an aliases. You can modify the list through it. Now, in this case, whether you change the value of scores or change the value of values, either one will change because they both point to the same location. Okay. Easy enough there. Okay. Let me do my house. Okay. Now, reverse subscript. This is something cool. Here, we've actually kind of did this when you worked on you, some of the other programs. If you say the name of the list minus one, it actually prints basically the end. Minus two is up one, minus three, minus four. So you can use negative subscripts to you know, point to different locations in the list. Which is kind of cool. I don't know if I would use one, I don't know, I might. All right. So let's talk about some of the operations we can do. Appending, you are going to be doing this, okay? Now I will tell you a change you're gonna to have to make to your homework assignment. They create a list that's a certain size, like say six, for instance, okay? They create a list of size six. You guys don't know how big your list is because you can have a random number of sides because you can have between six and 12. So you just can't create a list of that size. So you're gonna have to change that up just a little bit. So let's see how to do this stuff. In this example here, we're gonna create a list called friends. It created one, we really didn't do anything with it at this point, we just said now we have a new list called friends that really has no value in it. Then we can start adding to it. We can append friend, we can append Harry, then append Emily and Bob and Carl. What it did is it took the empty list and started adding elements to it. I need you to do that in your program. I will be checking to make sure you're using a pen. Now, in your homework assignment with dice, they have one list. You need two lists. Because they have one list keeping track of the frequency of the rolls, but you also have to keep track of the rolls themselves, so you're gonna need two lists. Okay. You should be able to figure it out once you start looking at it, you'd be like, this one doesn't do what I want. So you can use this as an example. You know, just call it whatever you want. You can call it friends for all I care. So you have to instantiate the list before you can start? Yes. Oh, yes, you do. What is, you know, William asked a very good question. So you can't do this here. You cannot add Harry until the list is there. So this says, create me a list. So if you hadn't done this, I uh, think it was just a normal variable. By doing this here, it says create me a new list. It's the same thing when you create a tuple, which we're learning about, it's, or even a dictionary. You need to create it. You're telling the, uh, the system, I want a new variable, call it friends, that will be a list. So that's what it creates. It's it just allocating space in the, in the, in the memory. It's so not really putting, it's really, because at this point we have nothing in it. This really says that we will be holding a list at this point. It does put one element, in, but we don't even know what's in it at this point. See, when you're creating a list, 
depending on what you store in the list, the element sizes change. For instance, if I have a list of numbers, like an integer, okay, each element in the list will hold an integer, okay? But what if I have a list of names? Obviously, names take up a different amount of space as integers, or maybe a list of doubles, or a list of whatever. Until we actually put something in it, we don't know at this point what size it is, so it's really like an empty list. It's like, we're going to have a list here, Okay, imagine like you're gonna have a house built. I'm going to have a house built on this lot. We don't know what the house is at this point, but we're gonna build one there. So we're gonna build a list. We don't know where we're gonna put it in yet, and then we can start appending to it. Now with a list, they all have to be the same data type. No, I could not put Harry and then the integer five. I couldn't do that, they have to be the same type. That's why it's very similar to an array in other languages. Now, tuples, on the other hand, you can mix the data types, which is what I do. I will play with those another day. But everybody got the whole append thing? Let's do one, just so, so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. Okay, I'm just going to bring up idle here. I'm going to say name equals oops, nothing. What that did is it created a list in memory. I'm going to call a name. So then I can go name. Let's try this. Name, I'm oh, sorry, name zero equals Ken. Hmm. Why did I get that? Does anyone know why? There is not a sign. But the first line says create me a list called name. The next one says go to element zero or index zero, put Ken there. We don't even have that element yet because the first line says make me an empty list. We don't even have any items in it yet. So what I could do is name dot append can. Now it has it because the first line created the list. Down here we added an element to it. So now if I typed length of name, what should I get? One. You should get one. If you had not put that zero in, if you'd just done name, name open bracket, close bracket, could you have a... should say length, I shouldn't give me any length. Yeah, zero. Right, so if you put name to open bracket, close bracket equals will, will it assign it at the <clears throat> first open spot? Oh, like that? Yeah, equals whatever. I don't think so. No, I didn't do it. Now, what I could have done is I could say name two equals will. Oops. Okay, so this one created me a list called name two. This one told me the length, which is zero. This one gives me an error because I'm not specifying an index value or anything. Okay, so this one down here says create me name two and initialize it to will. Now the difference between this one and this one is this created an empty list, this one created a list of length of one. Okay, that's the big difference there. <coughs> so really this line overwrote that line. It created a brand new list called name two, length of one. So now if I want to make sure the length of name two, where's my cursor? Now it's length one. Okay. So there's a really big difference in initializing an empty list or initializing a list with a value in it. You guys will have to initialize an empty list. And then as you add each roll of the dice, you're going to be appending the roll of the dice to it. Okay. So you're going to start like this with an empty one. Then you're going to be appending rolls because we need to keep track of how many rolls we've done. We're going to keep adding the rolls on there. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Okay. So it's, it's kind of cool the way that works. Let's, let's go down to, yeah. All right, so there's a pen. Mm -hmm. Worked very nicely. 
We can also insert. Insert says go to a specific location and insert something. In this case, go to index one and insert Cindy. So it's going to take our list and it's going to say, okay, we've got Harry, Emily, Bob, and Carl. So at index one is Emily. We're going to insert in one, pushing Emily down. So you notice Cindy went into position one. Emily now becomes position two. Here's where lists vary from arrays. Arrays, you can't do that. This is like an array list. In Java, you can have arrays, array lists. This is like an array list because now we can insert and remove. It's, you know, it's just pretty awesome. So insert, you specify where you want it, and it shoves everything else down. Okay. Right. All right, we can also find. Find will return the first element that matches. Okay. So if Cindy in friends, which is kind of nice. You don't need to tell, you don't even need to use the equal operator. It says if Cindy, in other words, this text, Cindy is <clears throat> present in your list of friends, which we saw on the prior slide, print out she's a friend. Or you could say if Cindy not in friends, print out enemy or something, you know? Okay. All right. And here, what we can do is we can say friends. Here's our friends. Now we can also return the index value of it. Okay. It will set to, so what do you think the results in this case will be? Any more. Pretty easy, it's right there. So what it's going to do is going to find the first element of Emily, in this case, is here. So this is index zero. This will be index one. And I'm not 100% positive. This should support last index, though. I don't know that. I don't think it covers this. I'm pretty sure it does. If it did, it would return the last element. I just can't remember if it supports it or not. Pretty sure it does. Okay, removing an element. Okay. okay, pop. Let me explain the whole push pop thing. When you work with a stack, especially like in reverse engineering course, a stack is like a temporary storage space in the computer. You can just stick stuff on it, like it's uh, stacking paint, plates up or something, okay? You can push something on, pop something off. Well, the way this works here is we pop it off. This says pop off position one. So it's gonna go here and take Cindy, remove Cindy from the list and return it, either print it or return it somewhere, because this pop does return the value. Then our list will have Harry is zero, Emily will become one. It does remove it and move everybody back up. So it's just like insert, but the opposite. Okay. So insert for insert, pop for. Yes, I'm surprised they didn't have remove, but they did. Okay. So far, so good. Everybody with me? Fairly simple stuff. I mean, their examples here are very detailed. Okay. Concatenation. Maybe I want to put two lists together. So we have my friends, your friends. Now we make our friends is equal to my friends plus your friends. It literally just puts them together. Super easy to do. So now you end up with one big old list. And it reads it that way just by putting the two list names with the plus sign? Yep. That's all you gotta do. So super easy to use. Okay, replication. Here we can say we want a list of one, two, and three four times. Just like we used it with string. Remember we did the thing times four or whatever? So now I got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Super easy, just like we did with strings. So that's what we Here, this is a very handy feature. You will actually see this. This is in the dice program. They're initializing, in this case, monthly scores all to zero for 12 elements. So now we have a list of 12 that are all zeros. Okay. You could initialize it to something else if you want. You could put a five in there. Well, okay. Actually, let's do that, make sure it works. Let's say name equals find 12. So now if I did length of name, let's see, it's now 12 long. If I typed in name, see what's in position name six? It's a five. Let me move this up a little bit. So here I said name, okay, this is going to be my new list, 
is equal to a list, because we have square brackets, initialized to the number five, and we're gonna make it for 12. So there's gonna be five, I'm sorry, 12 fives. So down here I said, how long is name? The length of name, it told me it's 12. So I said, okay, what's the position index six, which is the seventh position, it told me it's a five. So all elements of list are now five. Hmm. Okay. All elements of name are five. It's a stupid name for a list of numbers, but it's okay. Everyone with me? Yes, kind of? No problem. All right. I mean, walk through this chapter. I mean, play with them. They're kind of cool. Okay. Equality and inequality. You can actually check lists with just the equal sign. 149 is equal to 149, true. 149, 419, false. You can also use non equals. Okay. So check in equality, pretty simple there. Okay. All right. Sum, min, max. You can. Just like the name sounds, you can sum the list, you can find the max of the list, you can find the min of the list. I was gonna have you do that, I just didn't get a chance to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard to do, it's pretty oh. simple. Why does it say in for the minimum? Alphabetical. Uh, letter A comes before the letter F. Now, you you could actually have an and an Annabella, you know, because then, if the first couple letters match, it goes into the next letter that doesn't match. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does go by the ASCII value of these. This will be a 65, and that'll be whatever they have to be. You don't have to memorize. Okay? Okay, sorting. Let's do sorting. I wanted you to sort your assignment, but that was the part I was at when I got so rudely bothered by darn students. That's what I get for waiting to this morning to write it. I'm trying to make this so it's up a little bit higher. Okay, so we're going to say values equals one, four, six, two, nine, three, five, one, seven. Okay, so now if I print values, it should just give me the values. Easy enough there. And if I say values dot sort, now they're sorted. So I said values, I gave it some values, I initialized them just by typing them in. Then I said print values. Since we're the interpreter, you don't have to even type print, you just say values. And he gave me those exactly like I entered them. You can tell it's a list because they're in square brackets. Then I said values.sort. This sorts this list and returns it sorted. Then if I say it again, now you will see my list is nicely sorted. Sorting, very simple to do. Okay. Yes, no, maybe, hopefully. Okay. Copying it. We already talked about aliases. This makes us an alias. It's not an actual copy. Okay. Here's how we can make a copy. So again, this is an alias. It's saying prices equals values. They both point to the same location. Because remember, values actually point to a location in memory. So this says prices point to the same location. Picture values, say, say this was a uh, cell A5, okay? Y'all know what Excel is. Say this location is A5. So values is equal to A5. This says price is equal to value. So prices would then be equal to A5. They're literally just pointing to the same location. But over here, now if we say prices is equal to the list of values, it actually copies the list and gives you another list. So now if we were to change you know, a specific element, it would only happen in the name we refer to. Would you have to put that first before you did the code? For what? The price is equal to value. Yeah, you would have to do, no, actually you wouldn't want So like, to. say you've already written the code, like you already have price that says uh, a variable, you've already called it. Right. Then you write your code, 
But further down, you've got so much code you forget, and you don't want to go back and change that. Can you put prices equals value? It would overwrite so, prices, yes. Okay. So what you're saying is, like, right here, they both point to the same location. And then if we did this, it would actually overwrite prices and assign it an actual and entire list. Does that work both directions? So if you're creating like a dynamic list and say you, you populate something in, in values, I know it's going to change prices. Um, Not here. Once you do this, prices would no longer get the new elements. Okay. Actually, let's, let's do that. That's a, that's a perfect example. Okay. So right now we have values which is equal to those, okay? So if I said prices, values, so if I type prices, I get the same thing, okay? Everyone with me? So if I did values, if I spell values right, we're gonna append a 10. So if I type values, to prices, I get the same list. Everybody with me? Now, if I said prices equals list values, now prices contains the same thing, but it's actually a new list. So if I go values.append, well, Print values, you see values now main, now contains the 12. So does prices contain the 12? It should not. It does not. Okay? So up here, remember they both had 10 in it. So here I said prices equal to a new list of values. If I print it out, we still got the same thing. I haven't changed at all at this point. So now when I append something to values, when I print out values, you see now I have a 12. And then when I print out prices, it did not change because this is now its own separate list. So the difference? Okay. It's a big, big difference, especially because now we're actually taking up twice as much memory, stuff like that. So far so good? Is this the type of thing you had to do with your uh, cryptography thing? Yeah, I've done a whole bunch of stuff like this. Yes. Um, the ability to copy a list is actually so handy. Um, yeah, it, it just is. Yeah. Can you concatenate at the same time that you're, so list values plus um, list prices equals a new Ah, let me hit that. So you're saying so to create a new list. Yeah, new equals values plus prices. Yeah, but list in front of both of them so that you're copying the values of each one of them. Oh, yeah, I can. So this should give me two new lists. Should take the list of values, the list of prices, combine them into a new list called new. I don't think I've ever tried this, but I think that makes sense. It should work. Now if I print out new, I get both. Just true, it's all there. Yeah, they're all separate. Yeah. So Can new a shortcut, like do list and have parentheses of values plus prices instead of doing list values. Let's prices. try that. New two equals list. I don't know, I don't think this will work. Wait a minute. No, actually it will. This will work. Okay, this this will work. Yep. Oops. Yeah, it will. Yep, work fine. Yay. Yep, it worked. All right. <clears throat> Slices of a list. Maybe you only want a part of a list. Maybe you only want position six through eight. And remember, this ending is always ends before that. Okay. So in this case, we're going to get six, seven, and eight, just like they say right there. So we're going to get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to get 39, 36, and 30. I'm not going to show you an example of that one. With a colon six, just like when we did our strings, it's going to get up to the six, the six colon, 
and then from six to the end. Actually, this should get up to five. Yeah, but not including six, good. So zero to five, and this one will be six to the end. So it's technically the seventh number. Yep. All right, so we can find lengths, we can do lists, we can do values, we can do concatenation. Okay, we can do sum, min, max, we can just do all kinds of stuff. Okay, we could pop, we could insert, we can append, we can find index, we can remove. So remove, the, the big difference here, the okay, removes the element and moves all elements up. This one actually removes it but returns it. Returns the last, okay, returns are moved up in place, but this one returns it so you can use it if I remember right. What? Remove the given elements from the list and move all elements following it up by one position. So this one here removes all elements from the list or from the given position. All, yeah, it's the same thing. So pop position remove element is the same exact thing. Oh wait, no they're not. Hold on. Remove finds the matching element. It's not an index number. This is the index number. That's the value. That's why. That's what the difference. So this one moves, like say you say, you know, top three, that'll be the fourth position. Whereas if you did remove three, it would actually look for the value of three in your list and then remove that. That's the okay, then sort. There's a bunch of different algorithms in here. I don't think I'm gonna walk through all of these. They're all really good examples, but you're going to have to just play with it. Okay. You can fill them. There's a much easier way to fill them, but we just talked about that already. Um, combining lists, we did that with concatenation already. Just lots of different ways you can do so. I'm just not going to walk through them all. Okay. Oh, let's talk. With, I do want to talk about swapping first of all. Now, we know how to copy. We have to make an alias, but if I want to swap these positions, say in you know, a black to blue and blue to black, what you need to do is you need to come up with a temporary location. So maybe we'll put the blue over here, then move the black up, and then move the blue down. Okay, so that works. Um, I always wrote one called swap. I always wrote a method called swap, then it just does the same. It's just easier to write that way. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing here. You have a temporary location you're storing it in, and you're returning, you know, then, then put it in there. So you can also read input into a list, and they, the example, actually, you know what? Since I don't want to walk through all the rest of these examples, let's just look at the dice program as an example, so we can walk through what it's doing. It might be helpful to you, okay? All right, so let's, so at the very top, we have a main method. Is that what we start with? How do we know where this program starts? Do we start with main or do we start with count inputs? Anyone know how to tell? Yeah, we need to find something outside the definitions. And in this case, it happens to be at the bottom. Start the program, main. Press it right there at the bottom. Okay, so when this thing starts, it jumps right here. Then it says counters equals counter inputs nine. Okay, or count inputs nine. So what the heck is count inputs nine? So if we look at the, the definition right here for count inputs, you'll see nine ends up being the number of sides. So let's, I'm going to run this program, and I'm going to type in, you know, five, six, four, and a Q. And you'll see it did put in my five, six, four, but you will see there's nine sides to my dice. So what if I change this to like a six? Then if I do five, four, three, Q, now you see I only have six sides. So it's a dynamic size, but they are hard-coded. So 
you can get an idea of what you're going to have to change to make it a random number. Okay, how can I make this a random number size? Anybody? So here, random dot rand int to what? We'll go up to eight. We got to import random, you said? Yeah. Okay, so this should. You're going to have to import random from the, from the met, from the class. I mean, you have to pull that random. Wait, method. wait, that should work. No, uh, random and refers to, you have to have like one comma eight. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we didn't, we don't have to specify the from, it'll just get the whole random library. Yep. Okay. So in this case, our dice had five sides. And let's do, whoops, wow. Wow. It must be a one-sided dice. One-sided <laughs> dice. Now we have a one-sided die. That's a, you know, that, that's pretty dumb. So let's change this up to, we'll say, six to ten. Okay, I want between six and ten. That's what I had to put here. Ten. Eleven. Because I want to be able to have ten as well. Now we're going to put in some numbers here. In that case, we did have an 11 side. Wait a minute. Something's not right, is it? Shouldn't be getting 11. It doesn't start at zero. That's right, it starts at one. Yeah, that's right, it starts at one. And that's what they actually do it down here. They actually say it in there somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, right here. We don't use zero, that's why. Okay, so it was correct. So um, so now we can get the random number of sides. How could I print out how many sides it's going to have? Because I told you guys I had to print out how many sides. Uh, print counters? Look, you could print, you could put a, include a return statement with, the, with whatever the Integer is. Yeah, but the problem is count inputs, they're actually already returning something right here. I'm trying not to modify it too much. But what does counters end up being? Okay. Python could have multiple return statements. Oh, it can? Well, there's an easy way. Print length of counters. Wow. Wouldn't that do it? Yeah. You missed everything. Oh no. So there are 12. So that just happens to be 12. So we'll say, say whatever. This is sides. Ten sides. Zero, one through nine. Right. So yeah, we're gonna have to go up by one more, aren't we? So it's, it's because oh, the, it's the way they're doing it down zero. here. It's the way they're doing it in here is what the problem is. Oh, yeah. That's I changed all that on mine already. So you're gonna have to change that slightly to do it. But I'll let you worry about fixing that. Um, and down here they're getting the values. See this? Oh, Enter your values. You can actually change that as well. To just get a random stuff. I'm not gonna do all that for you. But this part down here is where they're actually printing out that table. So, so let's walk through this one more time. So we got counters. It's right here. So the sitting count, see here's where they're initializing it. They're initializing it all to zeros. And how big are they making it? The number of sides plus one. Because they're not gonna print out number one. Okay, then they're getting input for values, they're getting into blank, then they're saying, well, it's not equal to a Q, and I changed this up a little bit on mine. And whatever we got, we convert it to an integer. Then if it's less than or equal to one, or I'm sorry, greater than or equal to one, or less than the size, it's good to go. But what does this do? What's this else doing? So, if this number I enter is a zero or you know a large number of sides, 
then that will fix that problem. I think if I run it, I, I'm not showing you first, am I? So it's got to be eight sides, seven sides. Yeah, seven sides. I hate this. It one. says eight sides, but it's seven sides. Yeah, you're going to have to change it up slightly. It's just because they're not printing off number one. Because they're actually cheating just a hair. Because right here they're counting, they're, they're overriding the other one. So. But you can play with that. So if it's too big, they tell you it's too big, then they get input again, then they return. So what is counters? It's a list of the roles, not the individual roles, it's a list of the totals. So that's what they're doing up here, they're making totals up. You're gonna have to make another list for that. Then print counters, and it's a list of the totals. So they're printing out two format specifiers here. The first one will be the number of the side and counters will be how many of each side were rolled. So start with this, it gives you something good to start with and then you can change it up, okay? You understand? It's not all that hard. You do need to modify this section right here because you need to, you actually need two lists because counters is keep track of the count. In other words, how many sixes and how many fives and how many fours, but you also need to keep track of the actual rolls. But we saw how to do that with the pen. So you have to do that very simply. Okay? And then we have to figure out a way to make your roll itself. Well, yeah, that's easy. You just get rid of this whole input statement. You know, don't get input. <laughs> that just make it be random. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Do we have to use basis to basis, or can we write it from scratch? Oh, you can definitely write it from scratch. I mean, I took out majority of theirs. I think the part I actually kept was this very end part because that actually worked fine. Yeah. I kept that. And that's pretty much all I have to change yeah. everything else. I just did that because that way at least you have something to start with. But no, I added a bunch on mine. Oh, that's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, you can very easily. But yeah, the, the last part, the whole print counters works perfectly as long as you give it the correct list. And this adds to counters just fine. You're just gonna, but no, you do not have to stick with this at all, but don't just turn this in. Yeah, then you get, based upon the amount of effort you put into, which would be zero. But someone always does that. They always turn in whatever. I'm like, that's nothing. So how much input should I have to provide when I run this thing? Uh -huh. Zero, it's all random. See, it makes my job easier to grade them. I literally run it and oh, it works good. All right, so any more questions on this? So I will be out Wednesday the entire day. I'm gonna conference the whole day. I'm going to stop recording this. Okay. And